You're listening to iCannabisRadio.com. And good evening. Hi. It's, it's us. Wow. That's pretty cool. Am I on? No. Oh. Yeah, you are. I'm you just are? kidding. I am? I am. You are. I can hear you. I can hear you. Yay. Although I sound a whole lot louder than you do. I know. You Which is usually opposite. Right. Usually it's, it's me <laughs> that sounds all quiet. You Today turn them knobs. Today is the 7th of July, 2014. It is 7 7 14. So for those of you playing the home game, 7 plus 7 it is 14. What does that mean? And then, and then in numerology, so 14 plus 1 plus 4 is 5. So it's a 5. Yep. <laughs> That's about all I know. What, what you said. <laughs> I can add. I, uh, I just got off the phone with my, my son, who is in the, in the northeast on a lake far, far away from his mom. I know. I know he's having a great time. Uh, I said, did you go water skiing today? No. Oh, you didn't? I'm so sorry. No, we only wakeboarded. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me for you only wakeboarded. I'm going to take these off because I can't hear anything anyway. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's having a kind of all-American summer vacation, which is nice. Yeah, where's he at? Well, you don't have to say, but... He's on a lake far, far away. Nice. Yeah. How was your camping trip this weekend? It was fun. Yeah. Um, Did you see the boogeyman? Um, hmm. How do I put this? I am the there, boogeyman. There, <laughs> I, I was the boogeyman. Um, there's a, a family that showed up, just looked like two people in a minivan. They parked in a little lot next to ours. And then four kids got out that, that looked like, you know, f- Quinn, whatever... Four Twins times two. times two. Yeah. And then so the longer we stared at them, the more we realized, no, wait, they're sequentials. Um, which means that she's Seven, like, oh, I'm eight. done. I'm done having, I'm done having a, oh, I see. Maybe I called it something else. I'd call sequential like, like, oh, I'm done being pregnant. Um, come here. Let's, <laughs> you're in the, we're in the hospital. We can't just fuck me again. Let's get pregnant again. I'm already ready. And it's like the kids were just like four, five, six, and seven. Wow. You know, so, they call those Irish twins. <laughs> we Irish people call them that. Ah, uh, gotcha. I don't know why. It's rude. It's pretty rude. <coughs> but that's what we call them. I don't know. I was pretty rude. Like I. Were the kids cute though? And sure. Well behaved and fun to camp next to. Except that they were noisy first thing in the morning, on the second morning. Now. On Friday morning, first which thing in inspired the morning us to, you? to leave. Oh. Like seven or eight. Like even my parents oh. were like, "Fuck that." Like, uh, we don't want to go through that again tomorrow. So really? It's like, all right. So we ended up coming back, watched fireworks, got to hang out with both my girls. Um, cool. So we went up to the, the park in Broomfield and um, enjoyed the fireworks. Nice. Which was really great. There's a whole lot of people that were there. And the field that we sat in, we could see Westminster's, uh, Thornton's, North Glen's, Commerce City's. You know, saw wow. like six or seven different shows. It was like right on. Wow. And then we sat and, and made fun of people. Um, not like individual people, but just because there were so many people trying to walk down a sidewalk that was like two and a half feet wide. Oh, yeah. And so everyone's trying to hurry and get around, and they're yeah. still stuck at that little bottleneck. And it's, we just, it was funny. Yeah, it was funny. You know, had to make fun of them on a, on a 19 and a 14 year old level. Like, oh, look. They don't know how to drive either. I don't know. It was just, it was clean making fun of. It wasn't anything negative. See, making fun of? The situation, not people. Got you. So, because Perfect. it was like 400 people trying to go where one person could comfortably yeah. walk. Yeah. Like when me and my daughter go for a walk, my yeah. youngest, one of us walks at the edge of the street, this one, and one of us walks on the sidewalk, her. Yeah. So, they're not, they're not big sidewalks. Yeah. So to watch, you know, hundreds of people at one time and then see hundreds more come from across the street and then the light changes and then hundreds more. And it's like, where the hell? Well, are people you? don't do it very well. People forget kind of <coughs> some common courtesy. They forget the rules of the road. I mean, people, t- people struggle with that. It's funny. When it's funny to watch them walk and do this. Yeah. That's the thing. It's they're not even in their car yet. Yeah. And then <laughs> it's just it was a disaster. It was funny, though, because we were walking. So it was great for us. It was great. We did it right. Nice. So, um, 
first year I've been in Colorado for Fourth of July in quite a few years. Really? And my oldest dog is afraid of the fireworks. Now, she doesn't like freak out. She's not a freaker outer, but she sure did spend the night in my room. <laughs> and I mean, she was, she likes to sleep in her own room on her own little dog bed, uh, big dog bed. And yeah, she spent the night. And, and so I kind of have a sad tale. I have some really good friends, Scott and Chandra, who have a um, blue healer by the name of Indy. And on July 3rd, Indy got scared by the fireworks and jumped the fence. And she has not been seen since. Well, that's not totally sad. I was waiting for something really sad. Especially when you said jump the fence. I was like, oh, God, this is going to end gross. Well, no. Yeah, we just don't know. I mean, here it is the 7th, and she's been gone since the 3rd. She is wearing tags. Um, but, yeah, if anybody in the Littleton area sees a precious little girl um, who looks to be confused... Please check her tags. Call. Indy should go home. Yeah. Indy needs to go home. That actually is was a sad story. I think it was your your tone. Well, yeah, she didn't. I mean, I mean, we yeah, we don't know. We don't know that anything horrific has yet happened. But I just can't imagine <coughs> four nights without knowing where your dog is is awful. Yeah. Um. So as always, we have a fun, interesting show. I mean, just you and I are fun and interesting. I, absolutely. Yeah. But we're not all the show. No. No. That, that'd be boring. No. I like to have guests. Yeah, I do too. Especially ones with awesome information. And and great tales to tell. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, oh no, I don't know whose zip tie this was, but I've been playing with it backwards so that I wouldn't wreck it. And you completed the circle. I did. You made a six or a nine. Or an E, and your booby. <laughs> um, that would have been a great segue to a break right there. And we'll be back. <laughs> but, but we don't need a break yet. We don't so. need it. No, this is, my, this is my thought balloon. Uh-huh. I'm about to say something, which is good because we're on the radio. You can only say something small. Something though. that I have to, you have to whisper. whisper. <laughs> <laughs> we think we're funnier than we are because I'm not even on camera, so no one got that. <laughs> oh, wait. Why am I? Oh, I was. Oh, good. Okay, oh, good. oh, we're doing something new here. So I know. We, we used to sit next to one another. Now it's Well, like, but it's harder because... Well, the, um, the problem is, is love. Trust the me. problem is, is you're wearing this amazing outfit. You look fantastic today. So I just can't get too close to you. I have to look at your eyes. You're really fucking with me today. Like I have to. This is a test, and I am doing good. I don't know what he means. Exactly. But, um, but everybody else does. They're like, "Holy Schmidt, where is she going?" Yes, my dog and I. By uh, the way, speaking of, <laughs> the dog is eating our studio. Did you? The uh, some of the. Some of the uh, soundproofing fell off. And needs refastening. And, but in the, but. <laughs> in the meantime, Boone is keeping it warm on the floor <laughs> perfectly. Um, so, so, you know, there are some, some really freaking happy cannabis stories. There are a lot of them. I mean, we, we, could, t we could have nothing but happy cannabis stories every single week. We could. Um, we could ignore the stupid states that don't understand about legalization, that still incarcerate people. Um, we could not talk about the infighting in the industry. I mean, we could we could just do happy stories. And we should. We should do Happy July. All right. Well, this is a great place to start. This is a fantastic place to start. Because, you know, we have talked on and off about the – influx of people who have moved to Colorado to get help for their kids who have a variety of issues for which medical marijuana has proven to be a successful treatment. And, and this is one of those stories, one of those fantastic stories. But you know, it has a twist. And for those of you who, who know Team Landon and have met little Landon, and know his mom, Sierra Riddle, who has traveled the country far and wide, literally doing nothing but talking and educating parents about about cannabis for their kids. Um, you know, you know, you know what we're going to talk about today. But but this this story has an interesting twist. And in order for you to come back after the break, 
I am going to let Landon's mom, Sierra, who is our first guest tonight, talk a little bit about 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 Landon's diagnosis and what's happened to him and his treatment and and the most recent movements in his treatment, which includes a lot more natural and a lot less toxic. So that's pretty exciting. I'm really excited for this. I know. I'm excited, too. And, you know, I mean, Sierra's just – she's – She's just great to talk to on so many levels because, um, you know, it's it's really challenging to stay upbeat when your kid is going through what children shouldn't have to go through, and and she always manages to to balance her emotional and her intellectual and make really solid, smart, thoughtful decisions. And and still be just this, you know, wildly supportive mom. And and so Sierra will be on and hopefully we'll get to talk to Landon a little bit too. Um, right after our first com- commercial break, which should be right about meow. Right meow. We'll be right the back. law offices of Vets and Maiden and Mats provide criminal <laughs> defense, more. medical marijuana it's defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Are you a medical marijuana patient or interested in finding out how to become one? Contact Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. Conveniently located on Hamden and Tamarack in the Whole Foods parking lot behind Proof of the Pudding, Mile High Wellness offers a wide variety of edibles, hashes, and some of Colorado's top strains. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. 3525 South Tamarack, Suite 110, on the corner of Hamden and Tamarack. 720-382-8516. Mile High Wellness, where your care is our concern. We're, we were just talking about pooping, poop, and where dogs <laughs> shouldn't be pooping. Which, if you've listened to some of our earlier shows, you would know that that's uh, random things that we talk about during the breaks. Because I think we had a show where we actually talked about shit we talk oh, about that's during breaks. At this point. Talking yeah. about poop. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's so interesting. I would normally say, and Sarah, tell me if this is true. I would normally say that I started f- talking freely about poop as soon as I had a kid. Because your life revolves around your boobs and poop. Yours, every, I mean, it's, it's all of a sudden no big deal. But you know the honest to God truth? I talked about poop before that. These don't fit me. I don't know whose these are, but they're not mine. I talked about poop long before that. Like I, I don't think that, I don't think that that's ever been upsetting to me to talk about poop um, or bothersome. And my husband even says that I need to, have a little bit of discretion when it comes to the poop conversation. Thank you. Are you bringing those to me? Yes. Because I would love to be able to hear our guest when we call her. Um, so yeah, um, I like to talk. I like. To, I, I don't. I just don't mind it. I love people's reaction too when you talk about poop. For some reason, I don't strike people as the kind of person that openly talks about poop. But I am. So it shocks people. Yeah. The I way know. you said poop there was so funny. I'm trying my hardest not to laugh. I heard a Jenny in there completely. That was just some <laughs> funny ass shit right there. That was awesome. I like to talk about poop. That made the whole conversation worth it. So if you're grossed out, sorry. That I'm was not awesome. sorry. Whatever. It's my show. <laughs> right? It's your show too, right? Oh, yeah. So why I'm would you apologize? sorry either because it was it's, funny. Yeah. Uh, it's still funny. And you know what? I mean, if you want to talk about poop or anything else, get in the chat room and tell us what you want to talk about. However, it has to be after we make we have our first guest. Yeah. So we're going to call Sierra right now, who is, I, I know, she's sitting excitedly. Um, Listening to our poop stories. Oh, yeah. And well, thank God there aren't any stories. We were just ranting about the word poop. No, I mean, I told a story about, uh, well, not on the air, I guess. I guess it was before. So Boone has been pooping on our second floor deck, and it's just so strange. And he doesn't, you know what? He doesn't have a conscience. He, I'm like, bad dog, tail wag, tail wag, tail wag. <laughs> this is a no, tail wag, tail wag, tail. I mean, he just, it's, right? You don't get it. You don't, you just, he, 
and then he cocks his head and his ear goes up and one goes down and I'm like, oh great, he's just cute. So that sucks. I know. That's the problem with getting cute dogs. If you get an ugly dog and they poo on your <laughs> It's much easier to look at them and yell because then, why is that? That is. I don't know. I don't know burp. any ugly dogs. Bless you. Thank you. Was that a burp and a sneeze all at the same time, or is that just full on burp? That was just a burp trying to mute it as good as possible. So while we're waiting, while Gabe's calling Sierra, um, the anti poop, well, maybe it's all the same. So did you guys read Fast Food Nation when it came out a million years ago? Um, I have it. I ended up seeing the documentary before I had a chance to read the book. So did you watch the like fictionalized Fast Food Nation? So I just watched that the other night. And I, you know what? The movie? Once, or yeah. the documentary? The movie. Oh, that might have been whatever. Is it a movie movie or was it a documentary? It's a movie movie. Oh. There's a movie movie. Have you seen the actual documentary? documentary? It's, yes. It's well, horrific. It yeah. And scary. This is this is like a a movie version of it. Hello. Hi Sierra, you're live on our Cannabis Radio. How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm good. I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> Hello, she says. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing great. Uh we're just kind of resting. We've been traveling a lot, you know, speaking and educating and so we've just been kind of resting this past this past week and um yeah, just, you know, kind of getting back in the groove at home. Well, excellent. So so I don't know if you heard the beginning part of the show um, before we started talking about poop, <laughs> but um, I, I didn't tell a lot of people about what – about – Landon's story and about Team Landon. I mean, most most people who follow our show know intimately what's what's been going on. Um, but but can you start a little bit from the beginning about Landon's diagnosis, um, and then we'll kind of we'll fast forward to last week. Yeah, sure, definitely. Landon was diagnosed with aggressive T cell ALL leukemia when he was two and a half. And he, uh, you know, at the time we lived in Utah, um, where we're from, you know, and didn't know anything about cannabis or cannabis oil or CBDs, THCs, you know, none of that really. And, you know, I did have some experience with, uh, you know, cannabis as a teenager, as I'm sure most of us have, you know, and so... Landon just began the natural treatment, you know, when they tell you that your child is going to die, I mean, you know, or just that word, cancer. Right. I mean, it's it's the most, that's the worst thing they could have said, no right. matter what. It didn't matter if he needed a, a leg taken off, an arm taken off. Having cancer is the worst thing that they could have said. That's right. And because Landon was so aggressive, they only gave him an 8 to 10% chance to live 24 to 48 hours. And so it was, you know, as you can imagine, just a very trying time. And so we told them, do what you have to do to save my child's life, right. you know. And so he started chemotherapy and radiation. And, you know, it didn't take two weeks, not even two weeks. And they were having to give Landon narcotics, um, Oxycontin, morphine, Ativan, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, just very addictive, very heavy drugs that have no medicinal value except to get you high. And, um, you know, unfortunately, like I said, I did not know better. And so Landon was diagnosed in September, end of September. And by December, Landon was dying from chemotherapy, radiation, and narcotics. Um, he could not hold anything down. He was vomiting. He had lost 50% of his body weight. I mean, it was, it happened so fast. It was, it was just terrible. And, you know, these oncologists, these experts in leukemia, the only answer they had for us was to keep increasing his narcotics or to add in more narcotics to the cocktail and, you know, Neurotin and all of these other things that are just, they're just terrible drugs. And uh, Landon started withdrawing. You know, as crazy as it sounds, that's how I put two and two together is that we would uh, be out and about if he was having a good day and he would start vomiting and yeah. shaking and sweating. And as soon as we would get into the hospital or home and give him those pain meds, he would stop and he was fine. So, it, you know, it got to the point that they told us, you know, that, you know, he's so ill, we don't know if he's going to, you know, if his body's going to be able to take anymore, blah, 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 but we're going to keep giving him chemo every six days. 
So at this point, we were starting to research uh, things that could help Landon just simply get through chemotherapy. You know, we weren't uh, searching for a cure or anything like that. And throughout our research, my mom um, had a friend of hers send her some uh, information on cannabis. And my mom, you know, was a little bit taken aback at first. And, you know, as I'm sure anyone would be. I mean, he was a two-year-old child. And, you know, but she did her due diligence and she did her research and was blown away. I was blown away. We, I mean, it's when it's sitting there in front of you in black and white, all of these studies, all of these facts and information about marijuana, it is plainly obvious that it's being kept from us, from the citizens. And we asked Landon's oncologist, you know, is this something that could benefit Landon? And they told us no. They told us that it would not do anything for Landon. And in fact, they put him on Marinol. And it did, that didn't do anything either except make him sick. And so, you know, it was very frustrating to have these people that we had put my son's uh, life, you know, in, in their hands. We entrusted them. We thought they cared about Landon's overall well-being. And they did not. They cared about pharmaceuticals. They cared about their chemotherapy protocol. And we felt that they were wrong. And we reached out. We contacted the Stanley brothers here in Colorado. And Josh and Joel's family were kind enough to fly to our house in Utah and come and meet with us and educate us about not only Charlotte's Web, but about their high THC strains as well. And within 30 days from that time, we brought Landon over here to Colorado, uh, we started establishing our residency and we applied for Landon's medical marijuana card and we started giving him cannabis oil. And within a week, Landon was smiling, Landon was laughing, Landon was talking, Landon was eating, things that Landon was not able to do. And you know, it was such uh, it was such a miracle. I mean, I really can't explain it as anything other than that. And so we kept going. We kept increasing the dosing. And within two weeks of going over 100 milligrams of THC, I was able to not wean Landon off. I was able to completely take Landon off of all narcotics at once, all of them. No withdrawals, no issues, no nothing. It was absolutely incredible. They told us that Landon would have to be weaned off of these narcotics over a two-year period. So four years of treatment time and two years of a wean schedule. That's six years of my child's life that he was supposed to be on Oxycontin. I mean, how terrible is that, that they're doing that to these children? And so once Landon, uh, you know, really got good dosing in him and was doing well, we got to a gram a day, we started noticing in his blood work that things were starting to improve, that he was needing less platelet transfusions, less blood transfusions, that he was needing less medications. He was getting the same frequency and intensity of chemotherapy, but he was not getting as sick. And his blood was clearing up. His blood was, I mean, just the the cellular results, I can't even explain to you guys without having them all in front of me. It was just absolutely amazing. And Landon started healing. And so I moved us full-time here in August. And in May, I took Landon off chemo a few months before we moved here full-time. And because we were in Utah, I knew that they would not be in agreement with what I was doing. And so I moved Landon to Colorado after a six-month dual residency. And we, you know, we were very confident in Colorado, in the progression of the, you know, knowledge and education and the research here being done on cannabis and cancer. And so when we met with the new oncology team in August, um, you know, I was very hopeful and I told him what I had done, you know, and that we had taken him off chemo and that we only wanted him to continue with natural treatments. And they, uh, saying that they disagree with me is, you know, uh, just a... uh, (laughs) the easiest way I can put it, they uh, were very upset with me. They called CPS. They said that I was going to kill my child by giving him cannabis oil and not chemotherapy and uh, started a long battle with us. And that battle lasted all the way until last week. And, uh, you know, they pretty much bullied me into that allowing them to give my child 
forced chemotherapy every 30 days. And they wanted me to give him um, at-home chemotherapies, uh, two different kinds and a steroid, which anybody that knows anything about pediatric cancer, the steroids make these children monsters. Yep. It makes them very upset, makes them swollen, it makes their joints hurt, and it gives them mental trauma. I don't care what anybody says. If you're giving a child something that can actually create aggression and anger and violence in a, a two-year-old child, I mean, that is not something that any child should be given. Right. And so I refused. I told them that I was not going to give it to them. And unless these oncologists were that dedicated to show up at my house twice a day for the next three years, which is how long they wanted to give Lynn in chemotherapy, and give him these medications, you know, that I wasn't going to do it. You know, and can anybody guess how many times those doctors ever came out to give Landon his medicine? <laughs> uh, None. Yeah. Zero. So, you know, I had, I was backed into a corner, guys. I had no doctors willing to stand beside me yep. in a court. You know, nobody was willing to say in front of a judge that cannabis had cured Landon. Yeah. You know, he had been in remission for so long. And so at that point, I really realized that I kind of had to just comply with them. And I had to allow them to do what, you know, the protocol is and that there was nothing that I could do except take my child to them to be poisoned. Right. Um, you know, allow them to do these evasive procedures on my child looking for cancer because they knew that I was not going to give them that medicine. You know, they went as far as sending samples of Landon's blood all the way to Washington, D.C. for special testing, looking for trace amounts of chemo, trying to prove that I was not giving it to him. Right. And throughout all this time, Landon never relapsed. Landon now has 19 months of remission, wow. 13 of those solely using cannabis. That is I mean, so it's, phenomenal. It's been absolutely amazing for Landon. Cannabis has been absolutely amazing. That's, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. If you see my child today, you know, and you guys, Georgia and Warren, you have seen Landon. He is a fireball. Yep. He is, he's healing way faster than any cancer patient I've ever seen. I mean, it is absolutely incredible what high doses of THC and high doses of CBD has done for him. And so last week we went into a fourth chemotherapy appointment and I told them, you know, I laid it on the table. Here is 13 months worth of chemotherapy pills that you told CPS my son would die without. Here they are, 13 months worth. You're not poisoning him anymore. We are done with this. We are going, we want testing. We want to ensure that Landon stays cancer free. We want to have his port flushed, his blood flushed done, all of those things. But we're not going to give him any more chemotherapy. And if you guys don't agree with that, we will find another doctor. And, you know, I was half waiting for like, you know, the cops to spring in or right, something right. or CPS. And, and they just looked at us and they were like, you know, Miss Riddle, honestly, we're to the point that. We have no idea. There's no statistics for a child using cannabis. And he is so healthy and he's doing so well that we agree with you. Whatever you're doing is working. And we're willing to keep testing and allow you to uh, do what you're doing. It is unbelievable. Hallelujah. You have fought a fight, Sierra. Oh, after 13, no one has I'm fought sorry? before. No one has fought this fight before. No one has no one has done what you have done. No one has no one has has gone down. I mean, you, you didn't you didn't take a back alley. You went down the middle of the road and you said this is exactly what I'm going to do and this is what it's going to look like. Oh, and by the way, you guys are full of shit. And here's how I can prove it. And and you know, it's amazing. I've, I've never known Landon when he's been really, really sick. I've only known Landon when he has been this um, crazy, fun little boy. And, um, and it is phenomenal that, that Western medicine, medical doctors said, you know what? We were wrong and you were right and it, because you fought that, because you got them there. It's, it's a miracle. It's amazing. Well, the sad and scary yeah. part is that, that, they're, that they said no to something natural, and yes, you have to take this poisonous radiation. Well, and Sierra, isn't that true? Isn't, it, isn't the reason behind that because no doctor was willing to put their medical license on the line to say we're willing to take a chance? They, were, they weren't willing well, to you, do that. Well, you know, not only was it that, guys, you know, no doctor was willing to step forward for us, but also if I would have gone to court, 
these, you know, oncologists would have gone in there and ripped me apart. Right. You know, they would have spouted out all of these, you know, rigged statistics. That's exactly what those statistics are, are rigged. And they would have said, you know, we've treated 100,000 children with chemotherapy, 70,000 successfully. How many have you treated, Miss Riddle? You know, I went to school for 10 years for this, Miss Riddle. Right. I mean, in CPS, in the meeting, you know, Warren was there, and I think he can tell you guys, it was like a mock trial. You know, and they were like, well, we don't care what Dr. Bob has to say because how many children have you treated with cancer, Dr. Bob? You know, they would have torn me apart. Right. And it was, um, you know, it was so clear that it was not even about landing. It was, it was about them getting the way, about this child completing their chemotherapy re- regimen. That was it. You know, with all of the paperwork and the everything that we showed them about how Landon reacts to chemotherapy, and they still refused to listen to us. They still refused to take Landon as an individual patient. And, you know, when it gets to that point, it's, do you then stay with these, you know, supposed experts right. or do you then have to move on and do your own thing to help your child, right. to save your child's life? That's right. Well, and, and it certainly puts you in this really awful situation, this really awful predicament where they're saying they're threatening you. We're going to take your child from you. We are going to press charges against you. We're going to do all of these things if you don't do what we believe is right. And it's and, like a science fiction story. It is like a science fiction story. I mean, it really is. It's it's Sierra and and her experience against against these these professionals with dozens of years and dozens of letters after their name and and they make you believe that that their letters are more important than your maternal feelings and instincts. Or how about just right? I mean, doesn't exactly doesn't she have you know, the right that's to... something that I was looking for was a constitutional rights lawyer because Landon is a person, you know, and it's so crazy, guys, that, you know, these oncologists actually sat there and told me, you know, in front of people, in front of witnesses, if Landon could really grasp the situation and understand he would tell you that he wants chemotherapy. I mean, it took everything in me what? not to slap the shit out of that lady. Right. I was like, how dare you? And I asked her, I said, how many kids do you have? Right. You know, after my style. And she was like, oh, I don't have any. Well, imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> you know, you really can't understand it. It's like you said, Georgia, maternal instinct. Right. I knew deep down that if I let them do this to Landon, he was going to die. Yeah. I mean, it only took three months. Three months and that child was disintegrated to nothing. And they wanted to do this for four years of his life. Are you kidding me? You know, and it's, you know, and I understand, and I'm sure that you guys have seen the cases, you know, where the parents uh, believe that a daffodil is going to cure their child, you know, (laughs) or that praying to God is going to cure their child. And I'm a Christian, you know, I love Jesus and all that, but I believe that there's certain things that you then as a parent have a responsibility to do as your child's caregiver. You are responsible to be educated, to make yourself aware of these things. When I started researching, I had no idea about the natural treatments they're using in other countries. Vitamin C and, you know, sterilizing the blood, you know, removing all the blood, sterilizing it, and shooting it back in. You know, all of these crazy things that are natural, that are non-invasive, it's not going to kill you or make you sick, but yet every single one of them is illegal in the United States. Yeah. Imagine that. (laughs) I know. Hey, we have to take a quick break. Can you hold on to the line? Because we want to come back. um, We want to talk a little bit more. And then I also want people to know, I mentioned before you got on the show that you've been traveling all over the country educating parents because you needed that when, when you were doing your research. And so I want people to know where you've been, where you're going, all those kinds of things. So hold on for yeah, just a definitely. second. Uh, you listen to iCannabis Radio. We'll be right back. The law offices of Vets and Maiden and Mats provide criminal defense, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running medical marijuana centers, optional premises, cultivation operations, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout Colorado. With offices in Denver and Aspen, we can offer assistance throughout the entire state of Colorado. Give us a call at 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or visit us online at warrenetson.com. Are you a runner? 
Are you a runner who supports marijuana legalization? Run on Grass is a group of athletes actively seeking to change our marijuana laws. We speak the truth about cannabis, bringing the message through our feet to new ears. Check out runongrass.com to find out more about us, our events, and how to join up or how to sponsor a runner. If you're in the Denver area, please join us for runs or start a group in your area. Running not your thing? Any sport can do it. On Grass. Runongrass.com. The Law Office of Edson Maiden and Matz provides criminal defense, family law, medical marijuana defense, and advice about setting up and running a medical marijuana center, optional premises cultivation operation, and infused product manufacturing businesses throughout the state of Colorado. We're focused on providing high-quality service and customer satisfaction. We will do everything we can to meet your expectations. WarrenEdson.com, Edson Maiden and Matz in Denver, 303-831-8188, and in Aspen, 970-948-7183. Warren you're listening to Reverend Jeremy and Georgia on, on iCannabisRadio.com. Hee <laughs> that's so cute. Um, I'm Georgia, and I'm in the studio with me, Jeremy, of course. <laughs> and we are on the phone with, uh, with one of my me. favorite moms, Sierra Riddle, uh, Team Landon Head, um, Landon's mommy. And, and Sierra, you were just talking about this unbelievable battle that you have been fighting um, that that came to a pretty miraculous um, conclusion last week when Landon's physicians had no choice but to agree with you that your course of treatment using cannabis to to treat Landon's cancer was was working, and they agreed that you did not have to administer or take him to to receive any additional chemotherapy. Um, how how long? How are they? How are they measuring this? Are they going to continue testing? And if they see a problem, have you resumed the the chemo? What? How did? How was it left last week? So it's left at that we will continue testing um, through blood, and then every third month we will do a spinal tap to check oh. the CNS and the spinal fluid for leukemia cells. And then um, every six months, he will have a bone marrow draw to check the bone marrow for leukemia cells. And, you know, the reason that leukemia treatment is so long is because it starts off as acute and then it turns into chronic. You know, it's like a flu. You know, you go in and you get the seven-day antibiotic treatment. Well, by day four, you're feeling a lot better. You know, day five, you're like, I don't need those last two days. You know, and then you're back to doing the same thing and yeah. eating the same way and doing, you know, your normal lifestyle. And then you get sicker than you were before. And so that's kind of where they have seen with the, all of the studies and, and everything. <clears throat> you know, but where I'm at with this is that the treatment for leukemia has not changed in close to 20 years. Wow. Okay. So 20 years ago, they were getting the same treatment that my son was getting. It's not personalized. It's individualized. And thirdly, and I don't think a lot of people understand this, but my son's treatment plan is not created by an oncologist. It is created by a computer. And I have, you know, it's crazy that people don't know these facts, and I'm sure, you know, why would you? You know, if you never had a a child or a close relative diagnosed with leukemia, you wouldn't know these things. And so, um, yeah, they put the child, you know, all their information into this computer that, the pharmaceutical companies have come up with this program. They put all the information in there and it press enter and it spits out a randomized protocol for that child. And if they have study drugs up at that time or whatever it is, then it's a 50, 50 chance that your child's going to get put on a study drug, that your child's going to become a lab rat, you know, that they have no idea what this, this new chemo could do, but they're going to try it. And, you know, I refused to let my child be just another drop in the bucket. You know, 20, it's so ridiculous. 46 children a day are diagnosed with cancer. I don't think a lot of people know that. It's not rare anymore. It is an epidemic. And these doctors, these oncologists, you know, bless their hearts, I think that they originally go to school because they want to help children, you know, sick children. But then they get brainwashed. There's at some point they get brainwashed and, um, you know, and they're taught that this is the only way the protocol is the only way their narcotics are the only way to treat and cannabis is the devil. You know, it it really seems like that's how it is because most of the parents I've talked to brain cancer, bone cancer, 
you know, any type of cancer, uh, they're told the same thing, that cannabis will not help their children. So, you know, I get, I don't know if they're taught this or if it's just, you know, like a don't ask, don't tell type thing, you know, but Landon's treatment plan was not created by a doctor. And I'm not okay with that. I'm not okay with treating Landon like he's just some random person. He is an individual. And what works for That's someone nice. else's child might not work for mine. Well, absolutely. And allowing the pharmaceutical companies to drive that process um, is, I mean, it, it really makes you scratch your head. Um, you know, that's that's like putting exactly. the fox in charge of the hen house. Um, I mean, certainly the pharmaceutical companies, they're, they're out for ensuring that um, a, they sell as much of their product as possible, and and B, that that their success rates are are as high as possible. And what's a way to do that? Give the kid a lot of it. Give the kid a yep. lot of it. Eradicate every, you know, use toxins to eradicate every single thing in their body, healthy and unhealthy. Um, and and therein lies therein lies the difference. And I have to tell you, um, as a as a as objective as I could possibly be, which is which is hard because because I believe with my entire being in in the legalization of marijuana for all. I believe with my entire being that um, there's nothing better than the natural medicines. Um, I believe with my entire being that that Landon is is a healthy, happy child, not on chemotherapy. Um, but there's a piece of me there's a there's a a weird thing in the back of my head that still says if a doctor says so it must be right and and it's, and it's <laughs> yes. hard to give that up despite everything i just said it's well, hard to 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 not listen to that it's one of those comforts that we create for ourselves right. in life that, right. that says okay they've got it under control if i get hurt and i can make it to the hospital they're going to save me. Right. It's the same as the police. They're going to help protect me. Um, schools, they're going to teach me the right thing. They're going to teach me the truth. How do you wreck my entire day? I know, but it's the way it is. Yep. These are all illusions. Well, you know, and if, totally not even true. if you want to take it a step farther, Warren, you know, it's time to the point now that they're going to grow our food. That right. We don't have to right. grow our food. We don't have to raise our meat. We can buy it at a store anytime we want. Right. Yeah, it's, it's all about convenience. That's what American society is all about. You know, oh, I get the sniffle. I just have to run down to the urgent care or the doctor, you know, get my prescription yes. and I'm back to normal life. So let me tell you, you know, nobody wants to take the time to grow their own herbs and medicine. Like, you know, we're hoping to get done for everybody. You know, it's so funny that you that you say that. So I went to this was several years ago. I had a, a gross eye infection and I'll tell you all the de details at another time if you want to know. But I went to the eye doctor through Kaiser. So a, a very, um, you know, traditional doctor and he looked at my eye and he's like, yeah, that's a pretty gross eye infection. Do you want, do you want um, a prescription for it? And I'm like, pardon? And, and thinking of, well, of course, cause I want to get rid of my eye infection. And he said, well, there are people who just can't wait it out. It'll go away if you just wait it out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, well, of course I want to just wait it out. I know it's gross and it's itchy and it's an eye infection and I look, you know, icky. But if I don't have to take some kind of antibiotic and stick it in my eyeball or whatever he was going to have me do. But, but he, it was the first time I've ever had a very traditional doctor um, not try to get me to walk away with a prescription because you know what, Sierra, I think most people want to walk away with a prescription. They want the doctor to give them some sort of solution and there aren't those exactly. clean solutions all the time. <laughs> there aren't those. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you wait it out. Sometimes you have to be creative. Sometimes you have to try a whole bunch of different things. Um, and, and, and because, because people have what I have, which is this little, voice inside of me that still wants to believe that doctors have the right answers, they come across as though they have the right answers. And you know what? In your case, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't have the right answer. You did. You know, they, they didn't. And unfortunately, you know, a lot of, I don't think they have the right answer for a lot of these kids. And that's why so many children that are cancer patients are dying because everything is in this box. And if you don't fit in this box, then, oh, well. 
you know, and you have to move to Colorado or you're deemed an outlaw, you know, or an unfit parent or whatever it is because you're trying to use natural treatments. You know, it's um, it's just absolutely ridiculous how out of line it's gotten. But like I said earlier, I can also see, you know, why it's gotten this way because there were parents that were allowing their children to die over something that was very treatable. You know, so when, where does it get to that point that you can call something effective? You know, I think that all of us can honestly say cannabis is an effective treatment for cancer. There is enough people now, and maybe not people or children with the exact same kind of cancer as Landon, but there are multiple people out there, thousands, that have treated their cancer with cannabis oil. You know, and every parent that I talk to and everywhere that I speak, I tell people it wasn't just cannabis oil. I changed his diet. I changed the way we eat, the the water we drink. I changed everything about the way we do it. I tried to eliminate the stress completely from his life, you know, and just uh, make him a healthy person yeah. in general, you know, and all of those things are very hard to do uh, with, you know, somebody so young that, you know, they want what they want when they want it, you know, but it's not just one thing. It's nutrition. Yeah. It's getting the right things into your child's body and yeah. it's listening to your child's body because they can't tell us. That's the most frustrating thing to me about parenthood is that Landon can't just articulate what he wants and he's getting a lot better at it. But for the past, you know, three and a half years, I'm like, just tell me what it is. <laughs> right, you know, like, right. This exactly. guessing game of what's wrong with your child is, you know, I'm sure Georgia, you know, it's enough to just madden you. You're like, Oh my gosh. So then we throw our hands in the air and we're like, that's it. I'm taking him to the doctor, you know, and we expect that these doctors, because doctors were caregivers, that's what they were back in the day. Before they put a name on it and MD, they were caregivers. They were people that cared about other people enough to that's what they devoted their life to, you know, and now it seems like a lot of, it's all about the money and it's all about this and that, the vacations and you know, all of this nonsense, They've these doctors, these oncologists, these neurologists, all of these people have gotten away from their caregivership. They have got to start realizing that it's about the, it's about the patient, you know, and I was not shy enough a couple of times to completely freak out on people and be like, look, you're not paying me to be here. I'm paying you to be here. You better get what he needs or I'm going to freak out. Like, you know, he's two years old and he's suffering. You better get that shit now. You know, like, you know, it's absolutely ridiculous that we think we should wait on them, that we should take our children, you know, sick as dirt to the, to the doctor and wait for two hours. What is that about? You know, why are we not being considered what we are? We're paying your bills, Mr. Doctor. You know, we're paying your salary. You should have some investment in your patient. You should know your patient's name, know your child's condition of that, you know, that patient. I mean, I can't tell you guys how many times I've taken in for a procedure, an operation, a chemo, and they're like, how old is your daughter? And I'm like, nope, next, go get another nurse, try again. Like, you're not even going to touch him in any way if you can't even see that he is a boy. (laughs) And you know what? (laughs) He's a boy. Like, that boy is a boy. (laughs) Exactly. That's the thing. It's not hard to look at the chart and see his information, but they don't care. It's a factory. Pump him in, pump him out. Pump him in, pump him out. And give them a, a couple prescriptions on the way to ensure they come back. Well, and you know what? I mean, I can't, I can't congratulate you enough. It's funny. I, I, I would love to do a whole nother show with you just about, um, about, um, the, the medical system, the, uh, because, because some of the things that you say, I, I would really like to talk about for an hour. I, I mean, I mean, separate from, separate from the whole cannabis thing. I mean, there's, there's a way that, that physicians have decided that it's okay to treat their patients. And then there's a way that we have decided that it's okay to take it like somehow because they have an MD after their name, um, that they are, are exalted people. And, and you make some amazing points. And I think that, I think that part of what I like about your, your educating parents, um, includes, uh, not just educating parents about, about natural ways to, to approach your children's illnesses, but about, about getting what you want. You really do have to be your own case manager, uh, when, when working through, through the medical system. And, and unfortunately you have become an expert at that. 
you know, and that's exactly right. It is unfortunate, you know, and I tell people all the time, you know, I'm not a cannabis expert. I'm not a chemo expert. I'm a land and expert. That's right. And I can tell you what makes that body, you know, that child's body tick. And I think every parent is that child's advocate. That's right. They are their expert. We can tell when something's wrong with them, even if they don't talk. We're like, something's up, something's not right. They're blinking weird, yep. you know, when they're like two months old. Yep. <laughs> you no, know, absolutely. we know that's, that, that's instilled in us as being a mother, yep. as being a parent. That's right. Because some men do have that as well. You know, we know when something is wrong. Right. And because, you know, things like cancer or epilepsy or, you know, all of these different kinds of uh, very scary, um, very, uh, you know, uncertain things that come up. And then we're looking to put our faith in someone else because we don't know anything about it. We don't know how to treat it. We don't know what's going to work. You know, it needs to be integrated, you know, and you're right. I could talk about, you know, different aspects of this all day long, Georgia. Oh my gosh, I get so fired up about it. And, you know, unfortunately I am an expert now, but now that I've, you know, dug through these trenches with a plastic spoon and it's taken me this long to get here, I'm bringing everybody with me. You know, I'm willing to tell everybody how we did it you know, how to do different things to help your child and to get your child healthy. You know, and that's a lot of why I go and speak because if, you know, if I wouldn't have heard about it, then I would have never known and my child would be dead right now. I have no doubts about that. You know, so if I, I feel like if I don't do this, you know, then who's going to do it? You know what I mean? And if I just like, if I wouldn't have stood up for Landon, you guys, you know, and said, no, who would have? That's right. I did not see anybody lining up to come take care of my child after forced chemotherapy to spend hours researching laws and, and different things to save him. You know, only a parent can do that because only a parent or a mother, you know, in my case, I'm a single mom, only that person has that just, you know, it's deep seated love. You just cannot give up. You cannot give up on them. That's right. And that is a very powerful thing. And these parents, these moms, these dads, they have got to start finding their voice. They have got to start being their, their child's advocate, or these doctors are going to keep practicing medicine on them. I can't tell you guys how many times I heard that. Well, it's called practicing medicine, Miss Riddle. It's not perfected. Well, I was tired of them practicing on my child, and yeah. I think a lot of parents are. I, I and that's, agree with more. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I educate, because I know a lot of parents, you know, they just need that glimmer of hope. They just need to see that Landon is on high doses of THC, but he's a normal child. He's not sitting on my couch eating potato chips. He's running around. He's active. He's articulate. And then they're not scared anymore. That's right. You know? So, so um, we only have a couple more minutes. If people want to find out more about you, possibly donate, uh, what's the best way to get that information? So uh, we have a website, offerhopeforlandon.com, and we also have a Facebook page, and it's um, the same thing. It's facebook.com forward slash offerhopeforlandon. And we put a lot of great stuff up there, a lot of good information. And, uh, you know, anybody that is needing information or, you know, needing help, uh, you know, gathering details and stuff, I'm always willing to help any parent that needs help. I know how scary it is. I know it's overwhelming. And, you know, uh, we're here to help, you know, everybody to be able to get to the point that I'm at with my son, to have a happy, healthy child again. So Jeremy, Jeremy and I decided that we want July to be our happy story month because we spend too much time talking about um, all the, the bad stuff. All the bad stuff. And there's a lot of it. There's, you know, the infighting in the industry and 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 the fact that it is an industry the now, fact that as opposed to a movement, <laughs> right? Exactly. You know? All those things. And so we started Happy July Month with you. Yeah. So congratulations. Oh you're yay! Our, you're our first. Woo! Thank you. <laughs> Um, awesome. You know, and I, I, I believe in that so much too. You know, it's so hard for me because, you know, here I am celebrating a huge milestone and a lot of my fellow cancer moms are losing their children. And, you know, a couple have died this week and, you know, it's so hard to, uh, you know, find that light and to, you know, uh, not feel 
you know, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Not to feel guilty about right. celebrating when other people are suffering, but I think it is important. That's what keeps us going is to see the land in, you know, to see the children that are actually doing better and that, yeah. that are improving, to see the Charlottes, you know, and I think that's a great idea, guys. And thank you. I'm honored to be the first one. Woo-hoo! Thank you so much. And um, we are super excited to see you for the second year in a row at Riot Fest. I know. I'm so excited about that. You know, that was my first ever event and I was so scared. I was terrified and thank goodness that that was the first one. And it was such a large event. There were so many people because now every other event has just seemed, you know, so much easier to handle. So I'm excited to be there with you guys and to, um, you know, hopefully no broken bones this year (laughs) and uh, no craziness. Oh my gosh. It seemed like that was so crazy last year. Hopefully this year it'll all roll smoothly. I'm very excited to be there and help spread some education with you guys again. Yeah. I have to send you some pictures, um, that I don't think I showed you last year that uh, because when I took Landon around, everyone was assumed that Gavin and Landon were both my kids because, you know, Landon looks just <laughs> like me. Um, so people are like, oh, I'll take a picture of you guys. And Gavin and I were like, yeah, of course. So I've got some um, <laughs> some threesome happy pictures of Landon, Gavin, Yay! and I that I, will, that I will send to yeah, you. Yeah, you know, I, I love seeing those pictures. You know, it's been such a good year for Landon. Um, you know, we're coming up on a whole year of health you know, of just really being able to go and do and explore. And I'm excited for him for this year. I know that he's going to run all over that place and, you know, win some hearts. And I'm just, I'm so excited to just be able to spread the education. You know, that's what this is all about is ending prohibition for everyone in every state. Absolutely. I am so proud of you. I am so proud of you. I am so thrilled that the right thing is happening. And um, Landon is extraordinarily lucky to have you as a mom. Well, thank you. I appreciate that so much. I really do. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Well, All thank right. you for being on tonight. Thank you for sharing your story. That was that was one of the fastest shows we've had. Like it just zoomed by. Which is good because I want some. Yeah, ice cream. yeah. <laughs> thank you guys. You know, in the beginning, uh, uh, trying to spread awareness for Landon, it was like you know people were almost scared. They were like, ah, oh, we don't really, you know, we don't want to know about that. He was so young. He was such a so small young. child at the time. Uh, you know, and it was such uncharted territory. And now look at us. You know, now look how many parents are in Colorado treating their children. And you know, fantastic. it's absolutely amazing to see what happens when one person does the right thing. When one person stands up for everyone else, look what happens. That's right. Uh, thank you so much, Sierra. We appreciate it. And um, don't forget to, to visit OfferHopeForLandon.com. Thanks. And we will... We hope to have you back. Yeah. Like, we'll, we, we need a follow-up. We'll definitely follow up. Yeah, definitely. I would love to. All right. Thank you, Sierra. Thank you. Oh, thank you, I, guys. You guys have a good night. Have too. a beautiful night. I love these happy stories. You I too. I love you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, j- happy July month is going to be fan-freaking-tastic. We I, really need it. We'll have to probably try to carry it over into August, because and maybe September. And and, but October, on the other hand, we'll, we'll have to find to scary shit. stuff. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go total shit because it's October. I love October. Yeah, October will be. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So, but you know what? If you have happy stories, if you have some ideas, I mean, I already have a whole bunch of, of ideas. Um, sorry, we'll and, have to have. People, we'll have to have a call in too. Like, if you have a success story, call us. You know, anything, you know, what it's helped you with that's dramatically changed your life. Yeah. You know, that would, we want to hear the positive stuff. We do want to hear the positive stuff. I'm tired of, of, of being, I'm tired of, of this stuff making us angry and frustrated and. It's weed. It it makes us happy and and light and fluffy and hungry and horny and tired. Like this is good stuff. We should, we should stop getting so pissed off. Damn it. That's Ah. right. That's right. Um, always want to thank our sponsors, Edson Maiden and Matt, Smile High Wellness, Snowda Urban Garden Supply, Medical Marijuana in the Rockies, or Run on Grass. And you know who my favorite sponsor is? Uh, I do, but I like it when you say it. Cuffle Collimore and Company. Um, yeah, thanks, Dad. Uh, please visit them at um for all of your insurance needs. Man, if you are in this business and you know the uh, the – the laws just changed in in Colorado, allowing uh, independent grows and independent stores. So vertical integration is officially over. Um, my gosh, if you are starting a grow, and um, yeah, you need insurance. Oh my gosh, and and don't call Geico. 
Because they help with car insurance. They will help save you 15%, but won't tell you <laughs> why they're saving you that money. So Nor will they tell you what to do about your marijuana grow. <laughs> right. Well, since we're talking down about insurance companies, I'd like to just have a quick moment to say, fuck State Farm. Thank All you right. very much. Yeah. So that, that was my insurance company during the accident. Yeah. And, we don't have a video this time. No, we're not doing the video thing anymore until we do it right. Like I, mean, I, can, I know the secret. I do know the we secret. We can do the video all we want. We just have we just before right just before we put it up, we have to edit it out. Right. Yeah. Or we just gotta download it first, run it through some filters, strip out all the metadata, and re upload it and nothing knows any better. Whee! Or we could just edit it out and put it up right away, whichever. But it's so much funnier with that. Like, people just don't know what they missed last week unless they heard it live with that whole fuck Comcast. That was pretty funny. You know? Um, but yeah, this, this time it's State Farm, but for, for greater reasons. You know? Not, not, not funny reasons. Not funny at all. No. Very much trying to cheat me. Yeah, they just suck. I thought we were being positive. We are, but we were just having a brief down moment at the end of the show. The, Great, butt, right, the butt of the show, we were having some <laughs> shit, was bleh, out. So now that we have shit out the bad, let's get back to the good. Offer hope for Landon.com. Um, please, please, please check it out. Landon is precious. Like a true living miracle. Um, if Thanks to his mom. Thanks to the tenacious. The strengths, the courage. Personality, yeah. And you know what? Um, you know what impresses me? I, I'm, I'm sure that there was never a time where... No one supported Sierra, but there was a time where where Sierra was doing this pretty much by herself. Um, pioneers usually have to. Pioneers usually have to, and it just it, it impresses the heck out of me. Yeah. Well, I, so just remember that name because you probably your kids, she, your, your grandkids office, will be reading about <laughs> reading about her. That's right, Rosa oh. Parks. Sierra Riddle. There you go. I'm down. See, happy July. Happy July. This is great. And it'll go right into August. Yeah. So. So next week we'll be happy. Thank yep. you so much, everyone. <laughs> we got some Rawr. dog growls. Rawr. That means that's happy, too. That means they're happy. That means they're happy. Uh, you look adorable. Well, thank you. I'm sweaty and hot, so I opened up the door. Yeah, I have some under boob sweat. That I'm dying to fix. <laughs> it is hot in here. It is hot outside. I want some ice cream. Uh, you know, I had a vanilla shake before I got here. I've had I just badly needed it. It was so hot. Oh, that sounds good. I've had ice cream for dinner three nights in a row. Really? Yeah. Well, if you get ice cream that's shaped like, like a hamburger or a steak and colored like it, you know, like decorated all uh -huh. nice, does that no. count? I mean, if you were to have a slice of hamburger that tasted like it vanilla and chocolate. It count. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm done with meat. Like I'm just over it. I'm just, I'm just, a f I'm just done. I've done this a lot in my life, and and now I'm like, you know what? I just, I'm done. I I just can't do it anymore. Steak. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nothing. Red meat. You know, and red meat for me that's pretty easy. Red meat, me, I I haven't been a fan of in quite a long time. So no tacos, no steaks. Veggie tacos, absolutely. Tofu, fabulous. Tofu. I'll even eat some Tofu's things. Tofu's like like edible styrofoam. The grates. You know, I'll eat some things that swim. Just a yep. filler. Like shrimp. Yeah, but I'm done with meat. Be with me. Down with meat. Boo to the meat. You're not with me. I can't be. <laughs> like cow tastes too good. Uh, you know, bison, buffalo, deer. Mm. Mm -mm. Good stuff. Good stuff. We'll argue about this next week on the second week of, of Happy, Happy July. July. Wee! We Thank you Christmas all in December. Happy in July. I love it. Yay. Let's make t-shirts. We should. Will you design them for us? Sarah, be creative. Okay, she's You're got us. You're on the spot now. She's, she, yeah, she agreed. She's like, I'm down. <laughs> I don't care. All right. Thank you so much. We will see you on the whatever next Monday is. The, on next, the next Monday. The next probably the 14th. Yeah, because today's the 7th. It'll be 7, 14, 14. Ooh. What's be, numerology uh, that is 10... Uh, uh, 17, eight. 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 What's an eight? I don't know. We'll find out next week. We'll All tell right. you. All and right. Mercury is out of retrograde. Thank freaking God. Everybody's making a huge deal out of it. I'm not entirely sure what that means. It means that things are not as wackadoo as they were last week. Well, thank God, because this week has been weird so far, so I don't know. Today's only Monday. 
this week started this morning. I'm fucked. This is going to be a long (laughs) week. All right. Well, on that note. We try to have Happy Monday and he wrecks it every time. Every time. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday.